Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this lecture, we are beginning our discussion of the moon and we will have a couple of lectures looking at the various properties of the moon. Other than our Earth, probably the best explored object in the solar system and the only one to date that humans have actually landed on. So let's get started looking at the moon and let's give it some numbers here. And as I said, we tend to give these relative to Earth in many cases because it makes the numbers more comprehensible. So the mass of the moon is 0 0.0123 Earth masses, a little over 1 100th the mass of Earth. So not very much there. Diameter is a little over a quarter Earth of Earth's diameter. So if you put the foot four moons side by side touching each other, those would stretch across the diameter of Earth. Its surface gravity is much less, just 17% of Earth's, and its density is also lower. Now, you know, density we don't do relative to Earth. Density is a much smaller number, as is rotation period. So we give those in standard units, 3.3 grams per cubic centimeter and the rotational period of 27.3 days. Now, if you remember previously, we talked about the cycle of the moon being 29 and a half days. That is the cycle of phases, which is relative to the sun. The actual rotation period or the sidereal period is 27.3 days. Now let's talk a little bit about how the moon has been explored. We've certainly been able to see the moon since ancient times, but have not been able to see the far side until 1959 when the Luna 3 spacecraft traveled around and looked at the other side of the moon and gave us this first image. Now, while the image looks horrible by today's standards, it was amazing at the time because it was the first time we had seen this part of the near our nearest neighbor in space. A few years later, in 1966, we had the first soft landing on the moon. And then in between 1969 and 1972, we had the Apollo landings, one of those shown here. Uh, where we landed on the moon a total of six times uh, to explore and collect samples. Now the exploration did not stop after the Apollo landings and continued exploration went on including the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter in 2009 which was able to actually take images and see the Apollo landing sites from lunar orbit. So while these are not visible from Earth they are visible from lunar orbit by the Reconnaissance Orbiter which mapped not just this but the entire moon surface in detail. And then we talk about rovers on Mars and we'll look at those again when we get to Mars. But there's also been rovers on the moon. Now it's much more difficult to have a rover on the moon because the conditions on the moon are far more extreme than on Mars. The moon has no atmosphere to protect it and the temperature swings are tremendous from extremely hot baking in the sun during the day to bitterly cold at night. And that makes it difficult. In addition, the days and nights are 14 days long each. So while you have 14 days of sunlight to power uh, solar panels on a craft, you then also have to hibernate for 14 days. And rovers such as this one usually last a few lunar days, which remember a lunar day is a month before the intense uh, pressure, sorry, not pressure, temperature changes become too much for the mechanism. So what is our moon made up of? What have we learned about our moon? Well, it's primarily rocky material. It has far less metals than Earth, and we will come back to this when we look at how our moon might have formed. It has no atmosphere to speak of, but it does have some water ice in craters. Now water ice cannot exist on most of the moon because the sun would vaporize it during the lunar day. However, the sun can exist near the polar regions in craters that are permanently shielded from direct sunlight. So there are areas on the moon that never get direct sunlight. At some point, if a uh, 
comet happened to crash into the moon, it could have deposited materials. So there are, is some water ice there on the moon, but much, much less than we see on Earth. Now the moon is divided into parts. We see that here and we'll see it here in another image. Uh, the moon is divided into two areas, the Maria, which are the darker regions and have few impact craters. And remember that fewer impact craters means that they are younger regions. We also have the lighter colored highlands, which are mini impact craters, heavily cratered. So when we look here, we can see, for example, part of the Maria here and see hardly any cratering. Any of those, there's some cratering, but not a whole lot in the Maria. When we look at the lighter colored highlands, we can find craters on top of craters on top of craters in similarly sized regions. So the areas, there are two distinct regions on the moon, one being a lot older, the highlands, the other being a lot younger, the Maria. Now, when we talk about younger on the moon, we're still talking about three and a half billion years old. And that is much older than anything we much almost anything we have here on Earth. The highlands can be four to four and a half billion years old. Now let's look at the different types of rocks that we see from these and we get three different types. We have the basalts that we find in the Maria. These are dark colored basalt uh, volcanic rocks that we see here. And that gives the Maria their distinct dark color. They are also called vesicular, meaning that they have trapped had trapped air bubbles in them. And you can see the bubbly kind of formation here as they melted. Uh, were molten from the lava and the air bubbles, uh, or at least the remnants of them, remained in the rock. Now in the highlands, we see a different type of rock we call anorthosite. Anorthosite is the lighter colored, and that gives the distinct lighter color to the highlands. These are also volcanic rocks. They are a lower density rock and older, so they are the higher regions uh, being a lower density. And we see these again are both volcanic rocks. We do not see sedimentary rocks on the moon as we see on Earth. We see only volcanic rocks and we see breccias. Breccias are created on the moon by impacts. So let's take a look at one here. And they are created by impacts and the material is melted and fused together to make a new rock. So a breccia would be an example of a metamorphic type rock changed by heat or pressure of the volcanic rocks. And in this case, the heat is from a massive impact smashing in to the moon. Now, how do we get changes on the moon? What things change? The moon is really essentially unchanged from billions of years ago. Yeah, there have been a few impact craters, but overall, it's essentially the same. So erosional processes on the moon are very, very different than what we have here on Earth. We have no wind, no water. The only thing we have on the moon for erosion is meteorite impacts, micrometeorite impacts, something we do not have on Earth. On Earth, we have an atmosphere, and our atmosphere will burn up all these micrometeorites, little grains of sand in the upper atmosphere. So they never make it down to our surface. However, on the moon is constantly being bombarded with these over billions of years and has built up a soil, a powdered soil on the moon that we see here in the image with the astronaut's footprint. This is what we call the regolith or lunar soil, which may be an inch or so thick, uh, deep, as you see the footprint here. And it, it covers the entire surface of the moon. So this these micrometeorite impacts will slowly erode away at the moon's surface, but it takes a long time. It is much, much slower than the wind or water erosion that we have here on Earth. And as we see this footprint, this is what the footprint would look like today. This footprint made 50 years ago would look the same if we were to go back to the moon today and take a look at it. 
it would be unchanged. That is how slow the erosional processes are. A footprint on Earth would not last 50 years because it would be eroded away very quickly. On the moon, it lasts for it can last for a million years. So let's go ahead and finish up our beginning uh, lecture on the moon with our summary. And what we've looked at the moon, our closest neighbor, but is very, very different than Earth has very different regions. It has the Maria, which are the darker colored craterless regions or mostly craterless, and the highlands, which are the heavily cratered uh, lighter colored regions. And we looked at some of the different types of rocks and the erosional methods that occur on the moon. So that concludes this lecture on the structure of the moon. We'll be back again next time for another topic in astronomy. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.